Today I'm going to be talking with you about the Zero Dylan. These are barefoot casual sneakers from Zero Shoes with zero drop and a wide toe box. I'm going to be explaining the things I like and dislike, and I'm going to explain how these shoes compare to other barefoot casual shoes that you might be considering if you're looking for zero drop wide toe box shoes. So let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. First, I need to be 100% clear about how I got the Zero Dylan shoes. I got them for free from Zero to review for you. In addition, and this is gonna sound kind of bad, I am technically a part owner of Zero. Many years ago, they had a deal where you could pay for shares in their company that you can't actually sell on the stock market or anything, but buying these shares would allow you to buy their shoes at a discount every single quarter you get a special owner's coupon that you can use to buy the shoes at a really significant discounted price. Now that doesn't mean that I make money from zero selling shoes. In fact, as far as I know, I will never see any profits from being a partial owner of zero. But if I do want to make money from zero shoes, I can ask you to use my affiliate link, which you'll find in the description box down below. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about the zero Dylan shoes and the things that I actually like. First of all, I really like that these shoes have a wide toe box here because I have wide feet my toes need to be able to spread and if I wear normal shoes I just hate them because my toes get super cramped so I have not worn normal conventional sneakers in a really long time. The Zero Dylans have a very contemporary outsole it's a nice cushy soft feel it's not like a hard nylon-y mesh so they're really nice that way it's got that look that people have been going for for the last few years. The sole is pretty flexible it is not their most flexible soled shoe because the sole is actually pretty thick. Now looking from the outside you might think oh wow that looks like a really thick sole but it's not actually as thick as it looks. When you actually stick your foot in you realize that how high this sole comes up on the outside is actually higher than where the sole is under your foot. So it looks higher that gives it more of a contemporary casual sneaker look but it is not that padded. It is still more padded than some of their other shoes. So if you're looking for a transitional shoe, this might be a good idea because it has a pretty good stack height. Now, if you don't know what stack height means, it's basically how much padding is under your foot in total. With the Zero Dylans, you're gonna have the actual sole of the shoe and you have a removable insert to give you extra padding and that just comes there with the shoe. And if you remove that, it takes out like a millimeter or two millimeters of padding and then you have a thinner soled shoe here. When I compare these soles and their stack height to this shoe, they're actually, they feel pretty similar. I don't know the exact number. I don't know how many exact millimeters the sole is alone on the Zero Dylan, but when I compare it to a known quantity, which is the five millimeter sole, on these um, soft star uh, dash run amucks, they feel really close. Like if I just pinch them together with my fingers, it feels like this one and this one are super close. So this is probably five millimeters, maybe six millimeters thick, maybe four and a half millimeters. I'm not sure. But the point is, it's not super thick and it is still pretty flexible, though you can get some zero shoes that are even more flexible than these. One thing I really like about these shoes is how sticky they are on the deck of a skateboard. I have been playing around with a surf skate and trying to improve my surfing by using that surf skate skateboard and I noticed dramatic grip differences with this shoe versus any of my other shoes. I think that's because the sole of the shoe is kind of blocky, meaning it's like it's like squared off on the bottom rather than having any rounding off. And you have just a lot of grip along the edge of the entire footprint of the shoe. So when I actually step on a skateboard and I'm doing some little body twisting, body English to move the board, I feel like I'm getting massive amounts of grip, like my feet are kind of glued to the board. I also really like that these shoes have no arch support. That means my foot doesn't end up hurting and cramping because there's something digging into the bottom of my foot. I don't have flat feet or fallen arches or anything like that. I just have normal arches and they just don't like being poked from below. Now, before I talk about whether you should consider buying these shoes, I do want to talk about some of the things I didn't like about these shoes. First of all, for me personally, the fit isn't exactly perfect, which was really surprising because all the other Zero shoes seem to fit me pretty well. 
on these shoes, I have like a tiny little gap between my heel and the back of the shoe. Sometimes that kind of rubs a little bit funky. Now, when I first put them on and I was walking, I noticed it and I, it really made me worry that I was gonna get blisters or some other issue when I was walking with these shoes. But so far, I haven't run into that issue, though every time I put these on, I can tell something's a little bit off. Now, if I wanna fix that, I think there's probably a simple fix and that would be to just stick um, one of those little heel pads or something in on the back side of the shoe and that would take up all the negative space and I think that would solve my problem. Also, these shoes have that squared off kind of sole versus a more rounded sole edge that you might find on like the Primal Zen from uh, Lems or that you might find on Vivo Barefoots. Um, these Primuses, you know, you have this sole where the, um, the edge is rounded in so your effective surface area that contacts the ground is narrowed in, it's less, right? Whereas with the zero sole, you actually have like, boom, a really squared off edge so you have more surface area in contact with the ground. On a skateboard, that's really, really awesome because it's gripping so well. When I'm walking around town, however, it does feel a little clunky because I'm just kind of plopping this square edged foot down. It's not like it's super uncomfortable or anything, but it just feels different. It feels more like a conventional sneaker, which is something that you're gonna wanna consider when you are buying barefoot shoes. So now let's talk about whether or not you should buy these shoes and how they compare to other shoes. I think if you're in the market for a barefoot style sneaker with zero drop, you're probably gonna end up seeing the Primal Zen from Lems. Now, in terms of aesthetics, I think the zeros are just better in that respect. I was really excited when I, uh, when I got the Primal Zens. I don't remember if they sent them to me or if I bought them, but I was really excited to get them. I wore them on a trip in Spain and I was in Spain for two weeks and I found that my feet were hurting a lot and I was wondering if it was just because I was walking long distances because that's what you do when you're on vacation. And um, what I discovered through testing was actually that wearing these thicker sneakers was actually making my feet hurt. So I had with me some barefoot style sandals that were really thin soled and those were more comfortable to wear even though they were maybe half the thickness of this sole. Now, when I was testing this and walking around, I realized, oh, if I really pay attention, I realized there's something poking me in the bottom of the foot. It's poking me in the arch. That's because the Lems Primal Zen actually, despite being barefoot style shoes, have a little bit of arch support, which I don't like, and it really does lead to discomfort for me. So if you're looking for more arch support in your shoe, then I would suggest you look at the Primal Zen because there is some arch support. Otherwise, the differences would be that the sole is more rounded off on the edges, so it doesn't have quite the same uh, conventional clunky feel that you might get from the, from the Zero Dylan. Um, in terms of flexibility, they're pretty comparable. The Lem's um, stack height for the Primal Zen is actually a little bit thicker. It feels definitely thicker than what's on the uh, Zero Dylan. So if you're transitioning into barefoot style shoes and for some reason you still want arch support, then I would say, hey, maybe check out the Primal Zen uh, for Lems. And I, I think I have an affiliate link from, I do have a link from Lems, so I will drop an affiliate link down below, which will help support my channel. You don't have to use it. You can just go straight to Lems if you want, but I will have that link in the description box if you want to support this channel. Now, if you want a barefoot style sneaker that is a little bit thinner, that has that more conventional feel, and also does not have arch support, then I definitely would suggest looking at getting the Zero Dylan because this is a nice, super flat shoe. It looks to me more like a normal uh, conventional sneaker than say this one, like the Primal Zen is a little more um, athletic looking, sporty looking, where this just looks like a casual walk around town type of sneaker. Um, the other option you might look at is one of the Vivo Barefoot's Primus shoes and these obviously also have a more sporty athletic look it's a mesh uh, upper mesh nylon-y upper i find that the sole is quite flexible though i don't like how a lot of times on uh, vivo barefoot shoes toe doesn't want to bend quite as much as i want it to or bends a little bit funny but in general very very flexible thin-soled shoes so i do really like them and i i personally like the look but 
they will not have the same look or uh, texture that you get from this fabric that's on the Zero Dylan. Finally, we can compare to the Softstar Dash Run Amux, which are these awesome blippy shoes that I have. I got them in custom Upright Health colors and the sole on these is very flexible. The shoes themselves are just like, they're very comfortable. It's like wearing kind of like a sock on your foot, but that sock is made of leather. Um, and obviously these don't have the same look and feel. They don't have the same aesthetic of a sneaker sneaker, right? Like these are actually designed to be very natural feeling around your foot with this leather upper. And uh, I like that feel, but there's a certain time and place for these shoes. And it's probably not the same time and place as for these shoes, unless you can find a color combination that you feel works for you uh, and for what you're gonna use them for. But if you just want like a just very stealth, like, hey, I'm wearing a zero drop shoe with a wide toe box that doesn't look clowny, that doesn't look weird at all, then I think these are a pretty good option. I would just say, pay attention to how it fits and feels for your foot. Because for me, like I said, there's been a little tiny bit of a fit issue with that heel, but I think I can certainly fix that problem especially if you're transitioning out of just normal looking casual sneakers that have really narrow toe boxes, then this is a really, really good option. I think the Zero Dylan is also a good option because of its price. It's generally pretty affordable. You should check their website for the current price right now. But when you look at this versus say the price of Vivo Barefoot shoes, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to see how much cheaper the Zero Dylans are. The Zero Dylans and the Lems Primal Zen tend to be fairly comparable in price, but again, check to see what the current prices are right now. Like I said earlier, if it's me personally, I prefer the Zero Dylan over the Primal Zen because of the arch support situation. If you want more arch support, check out the Primal Zen. If you want no arch support and you want just a very normal looking contemporary sneaker, then go with the Zero Dylan. If you want a little bit of a thicker sole, then go with the Primal Zen. But if you're looking for not super thin, but thinner, then go with the Zero Dylan. And if you have a lot of money to spend and you want to look like you're working out in the 22nd century, then check out Vivo Barefoot. If you want to be able to customize your leather moccasin-like shoes, then go check out Softstar and their Dash Runamuck and customize your own shoe to look as crazy as you want them to. So after all this, let me know what shoe looks right for you. And if you wanna buy any of these shoes, check the description box and use one of my affiliate links. When you use an affiliate link, the link will just take you directly to the website and it won't show you any crazy messages like, hey, Matt Shoe brought you here. So don't worry, just click the link and when you're on that site, any purchases you make will help support my channel. It will not raise the price that you pay for these shoes at all. If you have more questions about these shoes or there are some shoes that you wanna see me review, then please be sure to drop me a comment in the comment section down below. If you're looking for a program to help you rebuild your body, go to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that'll work for you. For more videos to help you think right, move right, feel right, and buy right, check these out here. Support this channel through Patreon or PayPal using the donate link you'll find in the description box or using the join and thanks buttons you'll find on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.